Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Terry Briggs. And I'm Don Johnson. Here's what's happening in your city. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Five, five miles down. Lost the second floor. Lost my crew. I'm running low on air. Grand Prairie firefighters are training for a life-saving mission. Retrieving a colleague who is trapped in a burning building. The exercise is known as rapid intervention crew deployment, and it exposes them to a nightmarish situation that is hot, smoky, and dark. So our guys are having to go in in zero visibility. They're having to search for the firefighter by hand and by listening for the firefighter. Uh, they're having to find him, and then once they do, they've got to assess the firefighter. Does he have air? Does he not have air? Uh, is he trapped? Is he entangled? Firefighters say good communication is the biggest takeaway from the search and rescue training. Probably communication. Um, that's a big key as to what you need, what resources you need along those lines, as well as who you have inside, things along that. This morning, you know what, I, I realized that communication uh, is key in all these scenarios that we do. Uh, it's easy to get tunnel vision and focus in on what you're doing, and you might miss a command or uh, miss something that's going on around you that's been communicated over the radio. So uh, that's the number one key we're gonna, I think we're all taking away from this. Grand Prairie has had a couple of close calls, but we've never actually had a firefighter that was in distress that needed the assistance of a rapid intervention crew. It's happened quite a few times around the country, and there's been some very high profile incidences where uh, fire departments have lost firefighters in the line of duty, and the rapid intervention team was not par. Uh, we don't want to be one of those departments, so we're not going to wait for that to happen here. We want to be proactive, be ready for it before it happens. If and when the worst happens, Grand Prairie firefighters are now ready and able to give a trapped colleague a fighting chance. A Saturday parade in the streets of Grand Prairie signals the start of the city's annual Juneteenth celebration. Happy 153 years ago, on June 19, 1865, Union Army General Gordon Granger read the Emancipation Proclamation in Galveston, officially ending slavery in Texas. And since 1980, the date has been recognized as a state holiday. Here, that means a traditional Freedom March parade that starts at City Hall and makes its way through the neighborhoods of Dalworth before coming to an end at Tyree Park. It takes all colors, all fashions, all races and creeds and religions to balance the world and society. There, city and state officials address the crowd during a ceremony that also includes the awarding of college scholarships to the winners of the annual Juneteenth Essay Contest. Hamburger hot dog. Uh, let me have a hamburger. Afterward, everyone enjoys lots of food, fun, and fellowship while reflecting on the significance of the day in history. What Juneteenth is, is about really escalating um, the information and education of what 1865 really meant. It's not just particularly to the state of Texas, but to the entire world in a real sense. This year's parade and picnic marked the 30th anniversary celebration of Juneteenth in Grand Prairie. The Broadway classic West Side Story is taking the stage at the Uptown Theater in Grand Prairie. The musical is a modern day retelling of the Romeo and Juliet romance. These young lovers are caught between warring gangs and must survive hate, violence and prejudice, themes that still resonate today. Your best man fights our best man and we pick him. But I thought I would we be... shook on it, Bernardo. Yeah, I shook on it. West Side Story runs through July 1st. For tickets and showtimes, contact the Grand Prairie Arts Council or the Uptown Theater box office. Here you go. Okay, Diela, thank you. Grand Prairie's main library is the place for kids to get free lunches again this summer. Back for its second year at the library is Food on the Move, a program providing free nutritious meals for kids between the ages of 1 and 18 with no strings attached through August 10th. 
Grand Prairie was such a great host to Food on the Move last year. We actually served um, a little more than 4,000 meals. So this year we're back and we're hoping that we can increase that number of meals even higher. Funded by the state and run through <laughs> Dallas nonprofit City Square, Food on the Move delivers its meals at 140 locations around the DFW area. But it's not just the free food that has made it such a hit in Grand Prairie. After the meals are served, we encourage the kids to stay and play and be engaged in activities. We have a team of AmeriCorps members that are here every day and they've been trained in social emotional learning and different activities that can really uh, encourage the kids to come back and to stay and give kids an experience some of them might not have during the summer. Food on the Move is here Monday through Friday at 2 o'clock and it's great timing because we have programs before and after or kids can just come in, hang out, read and play. For more information about Food on the Move and everything else going on at your Grand Prairie Libraries this summer, visit the library's website or citysquare.org. At first glance, it appears to be just another of the many homes under construction in one of the hottest housing markets in the nation. But a closer look and listen. It is very, very important that this stiff back is down tied and touching this joist. Reveals that this Grand Prairie home site is also a classroom and an innovative case study on how a city is enhancing its mission to build a better community by investing in its future. What you do is you pull from you pull from this point. They are the future builders of America from Grand Prairie High School. Students that are getting the opportunity to do what no one in their program has done before. Helping the Housing and Neighborhood Services Department build a home for a participant in its home ownership orientation program and in effect, helping them provide affordable housing. We're providing for a family to realize the American dream. The American dream for everyone is to own a home. The other thing is, is under our home program, the program that the federal government funds, we have to have a match. And in having to have a match for the funds that they provide, this allows us to use the volunteer labor hours of the students to provide for that match. Whenever you get to the end, providing have, guidance is their teacher, Scotty Elmore, a, a general contractor for 23 years before he decided to pay it forward four years ago and get the Career Technical Education Future Builders program at GP High off the ground. Not a lot of teachers or schools get the chance to come out here and build an actual house for someone in need. So for me, and I'm pretty sure for them too, it's really important for Mr. Omar to pass down his skills to us and we appreciate all the help he gives us. These boys and girls, they take a lot of pride, not only in their high school and in the program that we're part of, but also that this home is, is part of their creation. The lessons I've learned by working on this project is hardship, responsibility, um, and like knowing that you should put yourself up front even if others don't, so you should be the leader. I like giving back to the community. I've been here most of my life. Uh, to be able to give back to them the way they gave to me is an accomplishment. They're taking pride in learning and being able to someday make a living doing what they're doing. But greater than that, they provided a home for a deserving family. Neighborhoods USA recently named the Grand Prairie Future Builders Program the best neighborhood program in the nation. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you'll join us next time.